Welcome back to The Grind for what I hope to be a helpful series of guides where I rapid fire break down uh, each fight on each path. Uh, each path will have its own video and it's meant to be a very quick snapshot of each fight, the key point or points to remember and so that you can kind of get through this video really quick and remind yourself or just get a refresher on a fight or the path. Thank you for this idea from uh, Tripwire. Uh, for my alliance. So we're going to start off with path one and Titania. She is quite annoying because every time you dash back, you're going to get a bunch of weaknesses on you. So you're going to want to limit how many dash backs you do. If you dash back once, you get a timer for 0.8 seconds. Dashing back again will trigger it. And uh, it also pauses your uh, her haymaker if it is active. So uh, that can prolong the haymaker for hers. So if you're going to dash back twice, take advantage of it, get some spacing, and then um, try to avoid dashing back again to let it, um, to let it run out. Um, the biggest thing for her is if you can get her to the corner and then uh, try to bait out specials without her dashing at you, it's very helpful, not only for this fight, but any Titania fight. So that's something that you should practice. The uh, path node is take your medicine. So when you parry, you'll get a tranquilize, meaning your debuffs will have a chance to fail. So you'll want to limit how many parries you do for this whole path. The next fight is Vision Arcus. And um, basically, if you purify an armor break or cold snap debuff then uh you're gonna give him some extra power and if you use a special three you'll be passively special locked for six seconds which i think maybe is meant to just limit doom cycle or something like that um this fight you know you can use an actual counter like america chavez or you can just blitz through with Aegon. it worked quite well the next fight is omega sentinel basically just a really big nasty omega sentinel with uh, the boon um necrotic boon making her abilities more um significant so she'll auto block more uh, she can pair you, and so you, you're going to want a really hard counter this Omega Sentinel. And if you're taking Aegon, as long as you've gotten your ramp up, I think it's about 500, then uh, this fight is uh, pretty easy. Uh, the next fight is this Airwalker, and you really need to knock him down every 15 seconds. I would aim for every every 10 seconds, so you really want to knock him down frequently. Otherwise, he's going to start regening a ton. If you nullify or prevent the buff from triggering, then he's going to go instantly to three bars of power. Even if you survive, he's going to trigger his um, whatever Galactus buff and start regening again. So if that happens, there's not really a way to salvage it. You really have to knock him down frequently. The next fight we have is uh, Captain Britain. And for her, if you purify a debuff um, of hers, your controls are going to be reversed for four seconds. Um, so... That can, and I don't, I think it also counts for when they expire. So you have to watch the reverse controls uh, when it triggers. Um, and if you're using Aegon, you're essentially going to have it active <laughs> the entire fight. Um, but you have to watch because sometimes the debuffs will not be on you for a little while and therefore you will not have reverse controls. And so you got to be very cautious when she's going to throw a special um, and you're going to have reverse controls. Then you have to go up against Wiccan, and Wiccan is not all that challenging in really either of the runs. The main things you have to watch out for is the uh, Boon Node, which if you have the same number of bars of power, including less than a bar of power, um, a 12 second timer is started. And if that timer expires, he's gonna take all of your power and that can put, you, put him up to three bars. So you wanna make sure that you're alternating you're on different bars of power and you're baiting out his special attacks quickly um, you want to try to not match his power too often because if you have trouble baiting out the special attack then uh, he'll take your power so that's the only one of the main things the other is if you don't have a way to control the healing then baiting the special ones while easier to manage um, and resulting less block damage he is going to start healing a ton once he's like less than 50 percent health it's quite a ridiculous amount that he heals so you'll probably want to push to special twos at that point unless you have a way to mitigate the healing like with shuri stacking up the buffs with despair or sorry the debuffs with despair the other thing to keep in mind is you want to be cautious about dexing when you've got a neutralize on you because then you'll get uh, some incinerate damage as well 
but that fight's not too bad. And then we have um, this big boy here, um, Psycho Man. Forgot his name for a sec. He's actually not that challenging. Well, I didn't find him that challenging, but um, you do have to complete prompts. And so he's going to cycle. Um, at first, he's going to do each of them um, before they repeat, and then it could be any of them. These prompts are you have to do a heavy attack, you have to do a special attack, or you have to block an attack. So you can wait out these timers up to 12 seconds, um, uh, and then you have to complete that prompt before it expires. If it expires, then you're going to take a bunch of direct damage, 15% um, of your max health. So um, you're going to want to complete these prompts. And um, if it's an easy one, you can try delaying it so that it doesn't um, switch over right away. Like if it's block and attack, you can let that thing go almost to expire. And then right, you know, in the, in the last three to five seconds, you can go block and attack and then it refreshes it. And that allows you um, some time. If it's a challenging one, uh, like say a heavy attack and you're trying to bait his heavy attack to land your heavy attack because you don't want to parry, then you might want to start working on that sooner. Or if it's a special attack, um, the big one, like if you're running the recoil masteries, you want to kind of wait out that special attack as much as possible um, so you don't have to take as much recoil. But as long as you're completing these prompts um, before they expire, you, you shouldn't have too much trouble with that fight. And then after that, we're going to go over here. And this one is not too bad, but I guess depending on which champions you're bringing. Basically, this uh, path node is whenever you use a special attack, you will not be able to trigger the dexterity mastery, evade, or attacks to miss for eight seconds. So um, the main thing is this dexterity mastery. So once you throw a special attack, you won't be able to dex. So for example, Silver Surfer, you throw your special attack, he has one bar of power, and then he throws his special one, and you instinctively try to dex the beams. It's not going to work, you're going to get hit. So ideally, just don't use special attacks, and you don't have to worry about it. So with Aegon, it's perfect, because he just does tons of damage without special attacks. Anyways, if you are going to throw a special attack, remember you can't dex, so just hold block, bait heavies, um, or just block the special attacks if they absolutely do throw it. Um, and then specifically for uh, his his boon node, um, his ability buff ability actually can't be modified. He's going to cycle between dormant every eight seconds. He's going to cycle between dormant bleed, incinerates, and shock um, passives on him. Whenever a buff is removed from the defender or expires, then those dormant debuffs will come active on him, um, dealing damage to him. Okay, now the bleed is the only one that's really going to do damage to him because he's pseudoimmune to incinerate and shock. It actually counts as buffs, so he'll do more damage. Really, this node doesn't really matter that much. If the buffs expire and line up for the bleed, they're going to help with a little extra damage, but it doesn't really affect you in the, in the fight, except that he's going to have a little more damage with the incinerate and shocks on him. Um, the next one is, I forgot her name too, Misty Knight. So her boon node, I, I didn't really notice any issues with it. Um, basically, she is going to match her charges more um, more easily. Um, but the big thing for her is, you know, you, you can't dex her mass, her, um, her specials if you throw your special attack. So, uh, and you're really going to want to be able to dex them because she can go unblockable. So really don't throw your special attacks in this one unless you've got good power control or something and you're and you're sure she's not going to have a bar of power if you bait her special attack first so she's at zero bat par bars of power then you can throw your special attack um, and then this one similarly you're, you're going to want to avoid throwing special attacks um, basically it's just a really big beefy storm pyramid x uh, she's going to have her tempests active pretty much all the time um I did this with Aegon. It took what, maybe four or five fights. My best run, I think, was 35% off in one run. Uh, so it's not too bad. Um, but there's not a lot of great options for this fight. It's kind of a slog. I heard Hulkbuster does really well. But really, avoiding throwing special attacks unless you've got ideal power control um, and then baiting out special ones. And then <coughs> shared fights here. This fight, I didn't find too bad. But again, I used Aegon um, for every single run, um, against Cap Sam here. Uh, if he blocks an attack, you're going to get a bunch of ruptures on you and they can deal quite a bit of damage, especially if you attack his block several times. And the annoying part is he'll auto block a lot. So you really need a hard auto block counter for this fight. Uh, Aegon for which does great once he's fully ramped. Um, you know, you're going to be attacking through his block, even if you're not 
triggering the ability of accuracy reduction, and when you are triggering the ability of accuracy reduction even below full ramp, uh, you'll be negating that. Uh, then you have Dragon Man, which can be a bit annoying, but it's not too bad. Really, the big thing with him is uh, he's going to go stun immune, and uh, unless you're backed against your wall, uh, it'll stay stun immune pretty much the whole fight. So if you're fine staying backed against the wall with him, um, you can bait out his special ones to get the uh, to convert the power gain into a debuff on yourself. That'll help to keep your health a little topped up. Um, otherwise, you're going to be playing against him stun immune, and which is fine because you know with the power gain he'll easily get to a bar of power, and then once he does get to a bar of power, you can just bait out the special one, back up, block one of the hits, get some willpower healing if you're not using Aegon, um, and then go back in for another combo. I didn't find it too bad, but it can be one of the ones that are a little bit annoying because if he doesn't throw specials and he starts to gain a bunch of power, it can get out of hand. This is a really easy fight. Um, he, I didn't really have any issues with. Um, he basically just gets access to his signature abilities uh, here and there, and it, it wasn't really too bad. If he's, uh, if Captain America is struck while he has five or more kinetic charges, he consumes them all and inflicts a concussion debuff for 10 seconds, reducing ability accuracy by 100. So that can be a, a little bit annoying, but uh, if you're using Aegon, you're going to just shrug off the concussion. Um, and if you're not using Aegon, you're just going to have to accept every once in a while you're likely going to have that concussion. Uh, and you'll have to be cautious. And then this guy can be a bit annoying as well. Um, so... He's immune to nullify fate seal stagger and cannot have buff ability accuracy modified. While you're close to him, he's going to get a timer for six seconds. And once the timer um, ends, if you don't leave striking distance to, to restart, reset it, if you stay within uh, striking distance for six seconds, um, it's going to expire and it's going to give him a Nova Force charge. When he has five Nova Force charges, all the charges are consumed and all of the attacker's current power is burned. Burned, meaning you're going to take damage. So it takes five. Um, it's not too difficult to avoid getting those building up on him, though, because you're going to want to step back um, pretty frequently anyways because of the power that he'll be getting. And then if he's not throwing specials quickly enough, he's going to gain power every time he dashes around. Um, so you're going to be baiting out lots of special attacks. I ended up baiting out a lot of special twos, so I did get a fair bit better at dexing his special two. Um, and then we are done that path and on to the Grandmaster. Uh, so hopefully this was helpful. I'll try to do one for every path. Let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll see you in the next video.